In this series of videos, I am going to go cover the Bosch Elgetronic and Motronic injection systems Opel used from 1975 to 1992. They were installed about on every European marquee during the 70s to early 90s, everything from Alpha to Volkswagen, BMW to Volvo, Citroën to Saab, you get the idea. The great thing is these systems were some of the simplest multi-port injection systems out there and very flexible in their design. In this motor, I use parts from a 2000 Ford Mustang, a 2000 VW Golf, a 1994 Saab 9000, and three different generations of Opals. And that's where the flexible nature of these multi-port injection systems really comes into play. Things like the injectors, the airflow meters, throttle position switch, coolant temperature sensor, the cold start valves, idle air control, and more come out of the same parts bin, but would get tweaked depending on the emission requirements of the country, or the engine arrangement, and of course the intake manifold design. Overall, there are two major differences in the L-Jetronic design that affect the ability to swap parts, and this mainly lies in the injectors themselves. Early L-Jet systems use low impedance injectors, which are also known as peak and hold injectors. They are sent a more powerful electrical signal, usually over 50 amps, to open. Once open, the signal will drop to 23 amps. This design opens and closes quicker, but it also will run a little hotter. The L-Jet system with low impedance injectors has a resistor built into the harness to handle this. This is a system that Opel used in the 1975 model year, the last model year for us here in the United States. And it was also used in Europe on the more performance-oriented models like the GTEs and the i-series cars. The other versions of the L-Jet are the LE series and LU series. LE standing for European and U standing for US versions. These, these later designs included many different features, some of them being O2 sensors, some of them being in general the computer because the emission standards were different from country to country. The high impedance injectors are sent a lower 11 and a half amp current signal to open and that current just stays on until the injector closes. This is done on a 5 volt level as opposed to a 12 volt level with the uh, low impedance injectors. That low amp current keeps the injector temperature lower which also makes it more reliable and also helps to lower the cost by being able to use less robust electronics and less components like the elimination of the resistor pack that is in. Motronic which was found in the 1988 to early 1990s Opal 2.4 looks from outward appearances to be the same as the 2.2 system, there's one major difference, that via a crank position sensor, it controls the fuel and the ignition system. It's the only one of the Opel CIH fuel injection systems from Bosch that actually control the ignition. All the other systems used regular mechanical distributors, some with optical electronic ignition, and even, ver even the early versions still ran points. The thing to note is that most of our fuel rails from the 1.9 to the 2.2 were all designed to use a barb style injector for most of the marquees. This was the go-to for the L-Jet low impedance style injector. A few did use it in a, high impedance, in a high impedance situation, so you can't always trust that it's going to be a low impedance injector just because it has the barb or the extra little piece of uh, hose sticking on it. And the reason they're called a barb injector, as you can see here, is when you take off the hose there's a barb there so you can put a new piece of hose so you're, if your injector is leaking you don't need to replace the injector you can just replace the, the hose piece the hoses are old old style they're 30 40 years old as well and they tend to leak and they also cause a lot of engine fires so what I recommend is using the barricade fuel line from Gates it's a five layer green shield barrier and it's made specifically to use on ethanol based fuel and it'll, it'll keep you from having to do it again and they last a lot longer and again the, one of the problems we've had with some of these older injectors they get plugged up by little bits of rubber because the ethanol is eating the rubber out from the inside on some of these hoses with the 2.5 earlier i showed i built that using the motronic 2 point fuel rail which was using a later ev1 style of clip and seal injector this type of injector has been used a lot over the years and in this case i was using them out of a 2000 ford mustang 4.6 liter as the 4.6 liter Fords were using a Bosch style of an injection system. If you have a 2.2 or a 2 liter LE injection uh, that was imported in the United States, the cross reference for that injector is a 1983 Volkswagen Vanagon, a 1.9 liter, and the 1982 Volvo 240 series. The interesting thing here is in 1983 they had a 1.9 Vanagon and a 2.0 Vanagon. The 2.0 is low impedance and it would be the injector you could use on your 75 system. And the 1.9 was the high impedance, which is kind of the opposite again, where the Opal was 1.9 was low, 2.2, 2 liter was high. 
Both are barb style injectors as our opals used, so it makes it con a convenient cross-reference to remember. The low impedance injector for the early Opal L Jet is also pretty common, if fitting a lot of Alpha, Nissan, Jaguar, Rover, Isuzu, Renault, and, and many, many others. Well, how can you tell whether or not you have high or low impedance injectors? Well, from the outside, you can't really. I'm going to put a link down in the description below to a couple of places that you can use for cross-referencing your injectors, be it, the, be it your fuel rate, be it whether they're high or low impedance injectors. The barb style with the hose is usually low, low impedance and usually the EV1 style seal injectors will also will be high impedance, but you can't trust that because it would not be surprising if later on in later series they use low impedance injectors on high performance motors that were using an EV1 style and or, and we know that there were some high impedance injectors from the Volkswagen that were uh, used that we can use for our high impedance systems. So you have to look on the links below. I have a couple of resources for you. One of them will give you the injector rating uh, for fuel. It'll also give you whether it's a high or low impedance. High impedance injectors have a 16 ohm, low impedance injectors are two or three ohm. There'll be a link there to a website where you can actually search for your injector number. And it'll sometimes give you a picture, sometimes it won't, but it'll tell you what it, what it fit, it will tell you its flow rate, and it gives you a little bit more information. Then also you can go to Rock Auto with your Bosch part number and usually dig up the part there as well. And you can then look and see, compare it, see if it's a, what style of an injector it is and if it'll work. Because the other thing that does change is the tip of the injectors and the pintles of the injectors change depending as well. That's also one thing that will change up the part number. That'll change up the part number. The length of the hose can change up the part number. On the Opals, fortunately, most of ours use a shorter hose. So if you get one that's for an Alpha, it may be a longer hose, but it's the same basic injector. Tips the same, length's the same, design is the same. You just cut the end of it off. And, or you use the, as I mentioned before, you just replace the hose in general with the more up-to-date kind of style. One last thing on the injectors is that if you're building a bigger motor and you want more fuel, you can, there's two options and still keep your stock fuel injection setup that you have that works for the car in general because most of the time if you're increasing 10 horsepower you just need to increase 10% air maybe 10% fuel depending on what you've done with the valves and in that case what you can do is you can just look at the chart and find yourself a flow that's a little higher on the flow and that may work for you the other option would be to simply replace the stock fuel pressure regulator with a manual one and bump up the fuel pressure because more fuel pressure we will mean more fuel in the cylinder for the specific time that the injector is open. If you go ahead and go up with fuel pressure you do want to replace the, uh, the standard OEM fuel pressure regulator because the, opal, the uh, standard OEM fuel pressure regulator will be set at a certain bar. Usually it's three bar which is roughly about 40 psi. Um, so that's, that's something to consider. The aftermarket ones, you can crank them up to whatever your fuel pump is going to give you. Some fuel pumps will even go to as high as 100 PSI, but you gotta make sure you have your return line and your return loops set up properly there. With that, I think we've covered the injectors. In the next video, I'll go over the intakes, airflow meters, and all the additional sensors. Um, obviously, there's a lot to learn, but it's not rocket science, and with a little trial and error, you can dial in the L-Jet as good as, if not better, than any carburetor. Alright, if you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button. If you feel I missed anything, please leave a comment below so I can try to catch it in the next video. Be sure to subscribe and click, click the bell because, like I said, there's a lot more coming up on this subject. Thank you very much and uh, appreciate it. So, until next time.